Hello, the viewer. I was gonna say I'm Harrison, the editor, but I'm doing a high-speed video, so I'm gonna be high-speed Harry for the day. So most of you that stumbled upon this channel, you'll notice that I've had a uh, Kronos 2.1 HD. Here it is, right here. I've done a, a unboxing of it and demo shots and uh, my favorite accessories. But the one thing I don't see yet, which I'm a little bit surprised, especially as this camera is getting more and more popular, is um, how to set it up for a shot. So that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna teach you guys how to uh, set up uh, your Kronos 2.1. You probably set up your Kronos 1.4 as well. Same same interface. But before we get into that, I wanna mention a few things real quick. Uh, this isn't how to get it out of shipping mode. That is like the first step, I think, if your camera's in shipping mode. But uh, if not, then don't worry about it. And then you can just pretty much plug in the camera, turn it on, and, you know, start recording. But um, if it's in shipping mode, I'm not gonna show that step because uh, I already did that and I'm not gonna, why would I put it back in shipping mode and do, but bleh, I'm not gonna do that. This is pretty much the step of, uh, you're now ready to turn on the camera and start recording for the first time. That's what step we're at. I should mention that I'm going to be showing how to set it up indoors. When it comes to setting up outdoors, it's literally just the same exact thing, except uh, your white balance might be a different, your white balance might be harder to adjust because of the sun and depending where that's at. But other than that, all the steps are the same. I also want to point out another very important thing when using this camera is you need a lot of light to get the best quality image. Um, I have a Godex VL150. It's somewhat expensive. My friend and I went half and half on the price since we work together, but I think on the Kronos website they have the SL100 and the SL200. Those are probably better, but this is what we got and got on sale at the time. There is a video by Daniel Schiffer, or Schiffer, if I've mispronounced it. I'll link it in the description, but he pretty much said that this camera is a game changer. And he's right when he was doing his indoor shots of Bessie shoes, is if you notice in the background, there is a crap ton of lighting. Very important. I do not, even though it looks bright right now, I'll show an example of just using a mirrorless camera and the chrono so you can see side by side of how much light you actually need to function the camera because it's a big difference. One last quick thing I should say if there's any other questions that come up with the Kronos that I don't answer, um, I might answer them in the comments but what actually would probably be 10 times as easier is going to the Kronos 2.1 forums and pretty much there's a bunch of people like me who own this camera who know the same things I do or even more. With that out of the way, I'm just gonna set up all the lighting again, put this on tripod, turn it on, and get ready for the shot. I should mention for this video, just to show as an example, we're just gonna do basic water droplet test. It's very simple and uh, easy to set up. Here's what I wanted to point out real quick. Right here is a Sony AR2, and as you can see, the image on our table is just pretty, pretty light. It's our, um, it's just a microphone on a tripod. Now here is the Kronos. And as you can tell, everything is uh, very dark and, uh, and it has a bunch of grainy lines. Now, keep in mind too that you want to have a fast lens as well. Um, this isn't even that fast. This is a 3.5, actually kind of slow. It's a very cheap lens actually, but this uh, Fujian lens is actually on the widest aperture. And when you actually close it all the way, it's completely black. But that's just a general description to show you that you really need a lot of lighting to uh, get the best picture. All right, so as you can see here, this looks crazy for just filming a drop of water. But in reality, it's what I have and the best I can do to get the best quality image. So I have a Godex light, which again, isn't even at full power. It's at 45, I'll probably do like 80. What I'm trying to do pretty much is, this is so powerful then I'm trying to rather just shine it on the object. I'm trying to even it out as best as I can. Obviously, even though there's two of these and they look very bright, they're not really gonna help, just to get an idea of how much light you actually need. So now let's move on to the Kronos. Yes, please ignore my Manscaped box on top of boxes to get the perfect shot. It's, it's what I can do. So right now, as you can see, I have the Kronos pointed at water. I didn't put water in it yet, but you can see my hand. All right, so we're gonna start with step one, which if you haven't already done, then I'm sorry, I didn't I didn't show this step, but that is turning on the camera. So just simply turn on the power button on the top. The second step is choosing your lens. I would, I'm going to be choosing the Fujian 1.7 lens as it's a fairly cheap lens and it's a C mount. One of your $30 or something like that on Amazon. 
um, I'll leave a link in the description, but it's fairly cheap. And the reason why that is, as I explained before, is it is one of the faster lenses. It has an f-stop of 1.7 to 16. Now, what that means pretty much is right now, this is at 1.7, this screen's completely white. Turn it to 16, it's completely dark. The third step is gonna be choosing the recording mode as well, uh, how many frames and re your resolution. So if we do that, we're gonna go here. I already have it set to 1920, 1080. Now normally when you click on 1920, 1080, it'll be like a thousand frames and then like a tiny bit of extra. I just literally set it to 1000 exactly because my OCD gets to me. Next up is to choose the recording mode. We want to do normal. That is what this video is gonna be based on. And as you can tell, this is the 5.5 gigabyte version. So we have 5.516 seconds of recording time. So we're gonna choose normal mode. It's already selected, it should be, and press okay. And then we already chose our resolution, which is 1920 by 1080. It's already one of the defaults down here, as you can see. And then when we're all done with that, digital gain and analog gain, just leave B, trigger delay. Really don't have to worry about it this time and press okay. Now, if you'd like to see me set up a trigger mode and do all that to get it to work properly, then I'll make another video, but just let me know. All right, so now we have everything and you know, like, look, that's too, we know that that's too dark and that's too bright. So once we, you know, choose like a proper f-stop, I think this will probably be like an f2, maybe. That's 1.7, f2, maybe like a, maybe like a 2.84. Once we find out the brightness we like, we're then going to use the other, we call, we're gonna use the focus ring to get it to focus. That's out of focus, that's out of focus. And if you look, you might be able to see it. I have focus assist on, but what I'm looking for is pretty much like a light blue. So right now my focus assist is showing the front of this front of the glass and that back. So theoretically, my water droplet should be in focus as it should hopefully land in the middle. So my focus being in front and at the back, um, I should be good to go. I could have also, I guess, shown my finger too to show that, yes, it is in focus. You can actually see that the Sony logo is in focus from back to front, a little bit more towards the back, but you get the idea. So now that we got like kind of a picture we're kind of going for and what we want, the next step is going to be to choose your shutter speed. Now, theoretically, you can do this first. I usually do it last, but right now our shutter speed is at 180. But turning it up, you'll notice the picture will be brighter. But the only issue with that is we'll get motion blur. What that means is pretty much is for a drop of water, it really shouldn't affect it that much, but maybe like something like a bird flying or like a car. The only, the clearest way I can think of to actually show this is by taking a picture with a high shutter speed and a low shutter speed. And here's two pictures right now. Now, as you can tell, there's a bright one and a dark one, but the bright one, has a lot of blur to it, and that's because it has a higher motion blur because it's letting in more light. Now the other one is darker, but the image is a lot more clear and you can see some more detail with less motion blur. Now normally, just by rule of thumbs and according to Gavin Free, the best shutter speed you should choose is 180. So now, and that's usually what I use to as when filming like animals, vehicles, whatnot, you get motion blur, but it's not too distracting, whereas Whereas if I was using 270, it would probably be very, very noticeable, but 180, it seems almost natural. So now that we have our shutter speed set, our lens set, and our focus, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna calibrate the camera. I should also mention when doing this, you want your lens iris to be closed. So right now it's open, it's completely dark, you can't see it, put the cap on, hit black calibration. Now the reason why we do this is because if you change the shutter speed real quick or the recording uh, resolution or the frame rate, there'll be little artifacts in your picture as well as like maybe like a line going straight across. The black calibration gets rid of that, so it recalibrates the camera. All right, so now that that's done, we can remove our lens cap, put it off to the side, and then we can open back our iris to where we kind of wanted it. So I was like an F, between like an F 2.8 and an F 4. So likely about right about there. So before we can record, we wanna do one more step, and this is actually a very simple step. So I conveniently have this white backdrop for a very important reason, and that is because the next step is going to be to do a white calibration. And this is, you wanna do this because if you don't, then your picture might be a little bit more orange or blue, depending on the weather. Like I said, we're in a controlled environment with a bunch of lights. This actually, so this will be a lot easier and we don't have to worry about the weather changing. There's a bunch of ways you can do this, 
But the simple, most straightforward way is if you have a white piece of paper, for example, I have a white backdrop, this would just go, hit white balance, hit set custom, and it'll automatically adjust. And you just hit close and you're done. And now the final step is actually recording. Probably should have set up the uh, water beforehand, but. So now with the recording mode we have, we can actually just start recording. Now, obviously this might seem weird because we only have 5.5 seconds to record. But with the Cronus, it'll keep cycling over and over again. So once you do the action, whether it's popcorn or water droplet, you then have within that time to hurry up and stop recording and save whatever is in between that 5.5 seconds. So all we're gonna do is do a water droplet. I'm gonna try to get it. Oh, that was a little bit too much. Doesn't matter. And stop recording. Now to view our footage, we're gonna hit play. And as we can see, we have a scroll bar going all the way up and all the way down. This may look very scary at first, but actually the user interface, again, is very simple. And what this pretty much says, what this says right here, if this is your playback rate. So if you play it at 1920 frames, when you skip by, it's gonna skip by literally in an instant and nothing's gonna happen. But we're recording at a thousand frames. So if we view it at a normal 60 or 30, I usually go 60. We can just hold it, hold the arrow and it'll start to play. You can see the current frames going and we're pretty much waiting to see what was filmed in that 5.5 seconds. Now, obviously we know nothing was done in the beginning, so we can skip ahead until we see droplets. So right there, there's some action. So I'm gonna back this up a little bit and I'm gonna hit mark start. This is pretty much when, so instead of just saving the whole entire thing, I can scrub through wherever I want and save bits and pieces. So now that we marked it right there, we can just go ahead and soon we should start to see Oh, there's one droplet, kind of, spilled off to the side. And there should be a bunch more. There's another one and another one. And we notice that now towards the end, the action is kind of ending. It's just the water, you know, settling back. So then we can end it right here. When we got our piece of footage we like, we marked it to, you know, start it and we ended it where we wanted to edit it. So this red bar is pretty much the only thing I'm saving. So now what we do is we go to settings. Now, if you notice, normally most people would just have the SD card, which is normally just SD card partition one. I have an SSD. Um, if you want to know how to format that or go about it, let me know and I'll make a video about that. For fast time's sake, I'm going to hit my SSD. The reason you want an SSD because an SD card will go about three to five frames when an SD card or an SSD will then go probably like 13 to 15. So it's a huge speed difference, you know, because if you're out there shooting a lot or whatnot, you want to, you know, get it done as quickly as possible. So, so now that we chose our SSD or your SD card, you have a save format, bit rate, frame rate, and pixels. So for pixels, I think the default is 0 0.70, but you can just, I put mine to one. I, that, that's just how I like it, but it's more of like a, what you prefer. Um, frame rate, um, if you're PAL, you might do 25. I'm American and whatever NTSC, I don't know. So I use 24, but I have done 25 just so it's an actual even number when it comes to adding and subtracting frame rates. But for now, I'll just do 24. I'm doing max bit rate. Uh, which is 60, and that is because uh, I'm pretty sure it's still 60. It might be more, but we'll just say it's 60 for now. It might be actually be higher than 60, but I'm pretty sure it's 60. But um, I'm doing 60 because you want the most quality, obviously, out of your footage. So then we have save format, and this is where it gets a little bit different. If you were just recording whatever, and you just wanna, you know, make a joke about it, you can use H.264, it's a standard format. But if you wanna get really good color correction, uh, I would do Cinema DNG, and there's a big difference. So we'll just save it as an H.264. So we have that red bar, that's what we're saving, and we'll hit save. It's gonna take a few seconds. It is now going to be saved to the SSD. Now, I should mention that before I said five frames to 13 frames, that is with a Cinema DNG. The files are considered to be each frame as a picture, but with an H.264, it's a compressed version, so that's why we're going like 50. So again, if you know, you're just screwing around for the first time with the camera, do an H.264, your SD card should actually be relatively fine. 
So there we go, we saved it. You can tell by the bars change. Green does not mean it's done. There's actually next after this one do render, it's going to appear blue. That just means that once you see the color change, that the save is complete. So now that we saw that, I'm going to change it to a Cinema DNG and save it. Yeah, so it starts out at 50 and then we crunch to like an 11. I don't have a, that fast of an SSD. It's an old one that I use for my old computer, but it gets the job done. Now, obviously that piece of slow-mo was not the best of footage. It was just to show an example of how to use the camera, how to set it up and use it. But um, you can get pretty great shots. And you know, here's some, I'll just throw up some more real quick. Obviously to film a water droplet, you want to film it vertical or in portrait, but so the camera can see everything, it's in landscape. So I know I should have theoretically put it upwards to film water droplet, but then you wouldn't be able to see the screen. As you can tell though, this file is still crunching along. And again, that's pretty normal. If you also notice too, our file size went from like, probably like half a gig with an H.264 to now seven gigabytes-ish, which is a big, huge difference for only saving about 2000 frames. If you see it that it goes over the mark end of frames, that's okay, it normally does. But there we go, now it's a blue line and that footage is saved. We're closed out of that menu, close out of this menu, and we're ready to record the next shot. That's it. Though it may seem like a lot, it's actually very simple. Once you, you know you start doing this over and over again, like I have, then this setup becomes second nature. And believe it or not, after you're done recording, you just hold the power button for between a half a second to four. Four will do a complete shutdown, don't do that. You'll just take your SSD or your SD card, throw it in the computer and your footage should be there. It's actually that simple. Now, if you wanna know how to deal with the footage, such as the DNGs or even the H.264s, that, that could be another video if you guys are interested. I just wanted to make this video to show how to set up the Kronos 2.1 and record something with it and then save it afterwards. Well, hopefully you enjoyed that. That's how to set up the Kronos 2.1 and just do a quick, simple record. Um, if there's any other things you wanna see with the Kronos, such as formatting the SSD properly or dealing with SIN DNG files or getting a proper lens or using a proper lens, let me know, even changing the battery. I think that'll do it, but uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully that you got information out of this. Hopefully this, hopefully this information helped. I'm High Speed Harry and I'll see you next time when I do something else with the Kronos.